The next speaker will be Marcus Elström, and he's talking about the, um, the mitigation uh, traffic disturbance and how we can no, we, oh, how we can mitigate tra traffic disturbance on, on uh, fauna passages. So, my name is Marcus Elvström. I'm a senior consultant at a company entitled Enviro Planning. I'm in charge of a research project regarding improving passages designed for wildlife and passages not constructed for wildlife within a Swedish research program entitled Tri Kol. I'm also conducting other wildlife research on behalf of the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences and Lund University. I will here present results suggesting that mitigating traffic disturbance can dramatically improve functionality of wildlife underpasses. The Swedish Transport Administration has constructed a wildlife underpass built for large mammals located in the southernmost part of Sweden. From 2020 to 2022, we studied the use of this wildlife passage under a busy highway with more than 10,000 vehicles per day. From a bird's eye view, yellow triangles show the area monitored for wildlife movements using one motion triggered automatic camera in front of each opening and one camera inside the tunnel. The governments for both transportation section and for the management of wildlife regionally, wanted to improve the functionality of the wildlife underpass. Therefore, a two meter high screen was constructed on either side of the road, when, which encompass 20 meter along the road section before and after the bridge itself. The screens will reduce high frequency noise and visual disturbance of cars and almost all of larger vehicles such as lorries driving by. First, a note on the distribution of wild ungulates in the landscape. The wildlife fences only encompass about two kilometers in each direction from this wildlife underpass. Thus, in order to improve steering wildlife towards the underpass, the wildlife fence should be elongated at least a few kilometers along the road. Red air, here marked in purple color based on vehicle wildlife accidents, is frequenting areas several kilometers east of the wildlife underpass, but also north of the passage site. Wild boar is distributed all across the landscape, similar to roe deer, whereas fallow deer seem to be more frequent towards western areas in the landscape. Green area in this diagram represents more visits at the wildlife underpass than expected based on relative proportion derived from all reported wildlife vehicle collisions in the landscape. Red area represents the opposite, fewer visits the, at the wildlife passage compared to the, its relative proportion of all wildlife vehicle collisions. So at this place, we have more crossings from road air than I would expect, assuming equal risks of involvement in traffic accidents among species, whereas fewer crossings from fallow deer. This may indicate that the wildlife passage is not suitable for fallow deer, whereas it is highly preferred by road deer. It could uh, be that fallow deer is simply utilizing unknown roads in the landscape, simply not encompassing this particular passage site. When mapping wildlife vehicle accidents, recall that fallow deer was more frequent in areas west of the wildlife passage. Wild boar seem to be almost as common as fallow deer in the landscape, and wild boar visit the passage fairly equal compared to how common they are in the landscape. The same t seem to be the case for red deer and moose. Red deer make up just a tiny proportion of all ungulate visits, which seems to reflect a low abundance relative to other ungulates. Moose is most uncommon in the landscape. Because wildlife is expected to react when vehicles is passing through, I separated between wildlife visits without passing vehicles and visits while vehicles was passing by. 
vehicle presence was monitored by an infrared beam across the road and was documented by a receiver with flashing light in front of each camera near both openings. So any light registered was defined as a wildlife visit during vehicles driving by. I created a candidate set of multiple regression models a priori model selection to identify main factors to explain variation in passing through or staying on either side of the wildlife underpass. Different probability in passing through the, uh, while vehicles is driving by in combination with difference between daylight or dark hours could indicate that the screen itself is only improving wildlife attractiveness during certain conditions. It could be interpreted as disturbing with man-made construction. It turned out there was no evident impact in passing through between wildlife visits while vehicles were driving by uh, compared with wildlife visits without passing vehicles. However, there might be a time delay when vehicles is passing by, meaning that wildlife will hesitate by finally pass through, or even the opposite, to quickly run through while cars is driving by. Any time delay is set to be analyzed shortly. So Moose and Red Deer was too seldom utilizing the area, not generating enough observations to analyze impact from screening. Wild boar, on the other hand, was 1.6 times more likely to pass through after screen construction. Thus, screening of traffic boosted passages by wild boar. In wild boar, the probability of passing through also increased with larger group size of accompanying individuals per visit. Road air was 2.9 times more likely to pass through Thus, screening off traffic boosted passages also by road air. Temporal activity patterns differed among ungulates. There was no difference during daylight compared to nighttime in probability of approaching wild boar and fallow deer passing through the wildlife underpass. In contrast, road air was 2.6 times less likely to pass through during nighttime compared to during daytime. This propensity in road air to more often passing through during daytime than nighttime was the same between period before and after the screen construction. Thus, road air seemed to be more reluctant to use the underpass during darker hours and the screen construction did not impact this behavior. Fallow air was 2.1 times more likely to pass through Thus, screening off traffic also boosted passages by fallow deer. In fallow deer, there was also a seasonal difference with lower likelihood of passing through during winter compared to fall, spring, and during summer. Number of daily visits by ungulates differed before and after the construction of screens, but there are many external factors that can contribute to these changes, such as different individuals living in the areas, changes in crops on nearby fields, or interspecific competition and hunting activities. Visits from fallow deer were 2.9 times more frequent after screen construction and visits by wild boar were equally common before and after the screen construction. In contrast, visits by rotor showed a tendency towards less frequent after screen construction. There was temporal differences among ungulates. Wild boar had 2.9 times more visits during nocturnal hours than during daylight and fallow deer had 3.3 times more visits during nocturnal hours. In contrast, roe deer was equally frequent during diurnal compared with nocturnal hours visiting their underpass. So we analyzed functionality of wildlife passage after mitigation actions by screening off traffic disturbance. This is a cost-efficient improvement which boosted the functionality of wildlife underpasses. The impact may be applicable also for other types of passages, such as multi-use passages. Most underpasses are not adapted for wildlife, but 
screening off traffic disturbance often constitutes an available mitigation action. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Marcus. You're very, welcome. Very good. <laughs> Questions? Yep. So, so Marcus, so well done. The uh, previous talk by Martin make me think the difference between traffic volume between the day and the night and whether that may have affected your results. So usually in most places there'll be less traffic at night. Yeah, <clears throat> that is true. And uh, I would also say, you know, in more populated areas, you have a, a wildlife in general show a tendency to be even more nocturnal activity peaks. So it's, it's a combination of, uh, I guess, of um, avoiding traffic but most likely also to avoid simply um, utilizing the area, migrating around while people are active. So that is, I'm pretty sure, would be the answer why we show we see more activity during nighttime. And as I could see, that this is most pronounced with wild boar, but also deer species. However, roe deer is show a less tendency of being more nocturnal uh, active. They are also pretty active during. Um, your, uh, daytime. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Very, very interesting talk. Would like to ask that. Uh, did you uh, how how free you are, or did you have some uh, issues uh, with uh, building these screens uh, related to like uh, traffic safety questions or uh, or this uh, warranty? of these uh, barriers or something like, like this or, 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 or yeah. You, you mean if, if there were problems with road safety? For example, yeah. I, I, I expect you, you had some uh, uh, agreement from the traffic, uh, what you have, traffic work. At, traffic, work at, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, sure. And, and uh, in Estonia we have uh, had some uh, sometimes uh, Problems to uh, uh, to put this such kind of uh, measures into right. force because uh, th there is argument arguments that uh, this is uh, not th this is against the uh, traffic safety or against the warranty points of this uh, road barriers or, or something sure. like this sure. and, and because of this so, such so kind of sc screens can't be built. Yeah, no. Th thank you. That's a very good comment, and uh, I would say. The, the, the screen we I studied here that was a quite a big solid uh, a lot of effort into building building it a uh, large construction. However, it is not different from what we would put up in order to reduce noise for people uh, living close to to these uh, roads. Now in Sweden, the only conflict I ever en encountered is when we when if I label this as a fauna screen. People might get upset and feel that we're only investing towards wildlife and not uh, taking care of people. But you, you could just as easily, not labeling this as a fauna screen, but also as a, just a simply noise uh, reduction screen, right, for people in general. Because it, it works the same. It's no difference uh, to reduce uh, visual disturbance and noise for people as it is for wildlife. So, do you, what what's is it the noise of the traffic or the visual disturbance? What what's the mechanism that's resulting in the increased use? Do you think? Perfect question, and uh, of course I don't have a straight answer on that one. Um, my uh, hunch is that the visual is uh, quite important because if you if you look at the exposure for noise in the landscape, there is hardly there's very few places where animals live and do not, is not exposed to the noise from traffic. And so because of that, my, the rationale is, I think they are quite habituated to the noise of vehicles. But when you have the combination of both the noise and you see the vehicles passing by, that start, then you have that uh, reaction that they, they will respond and they will respond by not uh, use, u um, utilizing this underpass. But we, we will look uh, more into that, I hope, and we have more projects running in Sweden where we are comparing uh, 
uh, not this kind of ambitious projects, but we're constructing uh, smaller screens along the roads. And that will be most exciting to see if we still can see the, the effect, like we have this dramatic effect from this screen. Okay, thank you, Marcus. Well, to identify different reactions <coughs> to traffic outside the underpass versus inside the underpass. Also, were noise levels measured before and after the screens were installed. If possible, please keep it short. Yes. So, so I, 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 did, I did not uh, record um, uh, noise levels uh, before and after the screening. The second question was... Uh, if you were able to identify different reactions to traffic outside and inside the underpass. No, the, no, no. Uh, you know, I, I only defined were they passing through or not, and I did not discriminate between uh, grazing or uh, other types of behavior. Purely, it was a visit, and it turned out to not passing through or passing through. Thank you.